everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I am experimenting. I'm going to see if I can create an artwork using acrylic paint and embroidery. So I found this linen canvas which is covered in clear gesso and it got me thinking can I create an artwork using these two very different mediums. So I started off just roughly sketching out the idea that I wanted to put onto this canvas. Now I'm just doing this with a light graphite pencil just so I can have the rough idea and shape so that I can paint around uh, where the background is while leaving the area where I'm going to uh, sew onto. So my idea for this artwork thing <laughs> was to do a panda with balloons tied around him and he's floating in a sort of really colorful night cloudy sky. I don't know why I decided to do this. I just wanted to do something whimsical and cute and colorful and I don't know, slightly simple but like really nice looking if that makes sense. And um, yeah, so starting off I just used a mix of like a bluey violet color, a light orangey color, a few different reds and a dioxazine purple which is my favorite purple colored paint to use. <laughs> and I don't know, I feel like I struggled a little bit with this mainly because I'm not the best at blending with acrylic paints and I don't know, I kind of had to go over it a lot and uh, experiment with different paintbrushes that I had at my disposal, which is not a lot because I seem to be destroying my paintbrushes frequently. Uh, if you want to know, it's basically I always accidentally leave paint in my paintbrushes and let it dry, and then the paintbrush is rock hard and unusable. <laughs> But anyways, uh, other than my destructive tendencies, uh, this art probably took me quite a while to do. Uh, the painting did take me a few hours and then the embroidery part took me a few hours as well. So roughly it was about four or five hours total. But that's quite normal for my art projects, I feel. So with this, I had to do a lot of layers. I started off with just a nice thin layer of uh, the dark blue color that I had. Now I added a little bit of my retarder medium which basically thins out the paint a little bit and uh, slows the drying time. And I used this because I really wanted to try and blend the colors out and get them, I don't know, smooth and you know, blendy and cloudy. But it didn't really work out that well because the paintbrushes I had probably weren't the best for blending. I tried a Sort of a soft natural hair brush and then a sort of a, a wide flat uh, synthetic brush and that wasn't working so I used a really small brush and yeah nah. <laughs> but after a few different layers and a few different experimentation techniques I ended up getting to a place where I was quite happy. Now I kind of just used my paintbrush to dab colors on and uh, I added a lot of colors to this and I wasn't really thinking about where which colors to put where and I probably should have experimented a little bit on like a swatch page or something because I ended up getting the colors a bit muddy but that was okay because acrylic paints are very very forgivable uh, they're very forgiving not forgivable <laughs> and you basically just let the layer dry and then you can paint over the top and they're nice and opaque so you can fix up your mistakes so that's what I ended up doing a lot in this <laughs> um, I ended up getting a nice sort of mostly bluish color background with a few hints of like a yellowy orange in the clouds as if there was a bit of a sunset as well as a bit of pink and purple in there too and I kind of just used my paintbrush to uh, do like a little dabby uh, sort of technique and I sort of blended the colors into blue and that sort of I don't know made it look a little bit less crazy and after I let that layer dry I added some very soft layers of uh, the uh, the colors that I used which were like the orange and the pink and the purple and the light blue and I used a bit of a pastel layer over the top of that where I just added highlights here and there and it started to come together and look like 
I don't know something similar to what I was trying to convey so yeah I'm quite happy with the background and how it is going and uh, it took me a while it took a few different layers and a few different techniques but I finally got it to somewhere where I was happy and uh, I was having fun so yeah Now onto the second part of this video, which is the embroidery. I'm not sure if anyone else has actually done this. I just had the randomest idea to try it out. But here is my sort of embroidery uh, or cross stitch items that I have left over from my last uh, cross stitch video. And I got out a few different colors and uh, mainly blacks, whites and grays, which I was going to use for my panda. So I started off just with a uh, sort of a normal stitch to try and go around the outside of this panda just to sort of, I don't know, do the line art, if you can call it line art, I don't know. But the thing is, I'm not using a pattern or a, a template for this. I'm kind of just winging it. Um, I want to try and make something that is like my design and it may, it may be a little bit uh, not, you know, a high quality as other panda uh, embroidery patterns that are probably available out there but you know what this is mine and I created it and I really like it for that so I kind of just went around the black areas of the panda and then after that I used a sort of light grayish blue color to go around the areas where there are where there's white on the panda and then after this, I filled in a few areas where I would just use the uh, thread and not separate it into little strands. I would just use the whole six strand thread to fill in the colors. Now, I basically just did uh, rough, I don't know what you call it. I don't really know embroidery uh, terminology that well, but I just sewed a bunch of times in the same direction until I slowly filled up the areas of color and to be completely honest this was actually very very fun it is a lot quicker than cross stitch let me tell you <laughs> and I'm actually really glad that I got this sort of linen canvas because you can see the fabric underneath the clear gesso and that really helps to sort of um, I don't know regulate your stitches I feel like if you were going to do something like cross stitch on this it would be very useful because you can sort of use the use the threads of the linen in the canvas to sort of regulate the size of your stitches and I did that a little bit and it was actually quite useful now here and there I did sort of uh, alternate which way I was sewing onto this canvas. This was mainly to uh, draw attention to specific areas like have a sort of horizontal stitch above the nose which created a little bit of a depth effect. I'm going to say I tried to do that. I'm not sure if it comes across that way but that's the way I attempted to do it and uh, make the panda look like he's got a bit of a snout. And to be honest, I'm actually really, really enjoying how this is turning out. It's definitely unique and somewhat different, but to be completely honest, I think it's adorable. And I really love the, the look of the textures of uh, the sort of embroidery parts over the painting parts. Kind of draws your eye to the panda and also makes it look a bit like a, like a plush animal or a teddy bear, which I think is really cute. So now is the time to do the balloons on this because as I said earlier, I wanted a panda floating in the sky uh, with balloons. I don't think balloons are that strong to hold a whole panda up in the sky, but that's what I'm going for. <laughs> and I decided to go in with some white beforehand just to add a little bit of a slight highlight to the balloons to make them look a little bit glossy. And after that, I picked three colors which I thought would go well with the background. I went with a sort of a light warm orangey color to go with the sort of orangey yellow parts in the background. And then I went with a sort of a a nice sort of red color that's still a little bit muted it's not fire engine red but it is a really nice sort of pinkish red color and then after that I went with a light pink for the third balloon and yeah those actually went pretty well with the background but they were still I don't know vi vivid and bright enough to stand out from the background 
After this, I decided to paint around the edges of the canvas because I felt like it would add a nice little border and also, I don't know, fit with the black parts of the panda. And we are done. So here is the final results for this. And to be completely honest, I love this. It's definitely not the most detailed artwork, but I think the style is really cute. And the sort of, I don't know, fabric-y texture of the panda just stands out really well against that sort of painterly background. So anyways, let me know what you think, guys. I really enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun making it, and I think it is different enough that you guys might have enjoyed it as well. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please hit like, and if you haven't already, subscribe to get your scribble fix in the future. And I will see you in my next video. Have a lovely day and see you everyone.